she's done both a uh, movie and a commercial. Today, we will meet a special Somali cat. I'm Janice, and this is my cat Summer, or as she is known in the cat fancy world, Tajara Summer Samba. Summer's journey as a Somali cat has been nothing short of extraordinary. From being a former show cat to providing emotional support to patients at the hospital, she has become an ambassador for her breed, showcasing the unique characteristics and charm that makes Somali cats so beloved. So if you're thinking about getting a Somali cat, this is the video for you. We will learn about Summer and the things you should know before getting a Somali cat. And at the end, she will share some of her favorite memories of her cat. I am the cat Butler. Usually, my two ragdoll cats, Timo and Arya, are the stars of the channel. But today, I will introduce Summer, a Somali cat, and interview her owner, Janice. This is a series where we learn about different cat breeds from the owners themselves. I've always really loved Abbeys. Abyssinians, I always loved how active they were and like their look. But I've always really loved long hair cats too. And then uh, in the late 90s, I discovered that there was a long haired version of the Abyssinian called Somali. And I got really excited about that. The history of the Somali cat is rather mysterious. Some experts believe that a recessive gene was introduced into the Abyssinian breed in the early 1900s that resulted in a beautiful Somali cat. I did my research on, on the internet. It was like 1999 or something like that, so the internet was still young, but there were already Somali breeders on the internet, and I found one in the Southern California area. And, and she actually vetted me quite a bit as a potential owner of one of her cats and responsible breeders will do that. They will not just let anybody have their cat. They really want to make sure it's going to be a good home. I had to go on a waiting list because uh, she, to this day she still has a waiting list for her cats because Somalis are not that common and once people find out about them they get very passionate about them. And so I had to wait a couple of years before I had my first Somali. Summer is actually my second Somali. Somali cats have a fox-like appearance with their bushy tails, tufts of hair between their toes, and beautiful ticked coat. The Somali cat has a striking appearance. The breed comes in four colors, ruddy, red, blue, and fawn. The United States term for summer's coloring is called ruddy. Their almond-shaped eyes can range in color from intense green to rich copper. In terms of size, Somali cats are considered medium-sized cats, and they typically weigh between 8 to 12 pounds. Life can be cruel to us, taking away our cats early. Before summer, Janice had a Somali cat named Sparkle. That was Sparkle, and she was the one who was the original founder of the blog SparkleCat.com. And actually a couple of books came out of that too. I actually got a book deal um, with a publishing company at one point to publish some of her advice columns because Sparkle had an advice column <laughs> called Dear Sparkle. And Sparkle became ill with like a really severe d kidney disease. Um, and she was kind of young for that too. She was like about 12 years old. And it was right around the time I met Summer. And I met Summer at her very first cat show in July of 2014. And she was awesome and she was very cool. So I went to the cat show and I literally took her home from the cat show. Sparkle actually passed away. I, you know, it's like she was like literally like dying. I had to have her put down. According to the ASPCA, Somali cats on average live for about 10 to 15 years. But since the breed is inherently healthy and strong, 
Some cats can even live beyond 19 years with proper care. Unfortunately, Somali cats are prone to two hereditary diseases. One inherited disease is pyruvate kinase deficiency, or PK deficiency, that causes anemia in the cat, which reduces the amount of red blood cells circulating in the bloodstream. As a result, symptoms can include weakness and weight loss. The other inherited disease is progressive retinal atrophy that causes progressive blindness in cats. The good news is that these hereditary diseases can be identified with a DNA test. To reduce the chances of these two diseases, reputable breeders will screen breeding cats for PK deficiency or progressive retinal atrophy and remove those cats from the breeding pool. So if you plan to get a Somali cat, I recommend getting one from a reputable breeder. If you would like one of these DNA tests, I will link it in the description below. If you enjoyed this video so far, please consider subscribing. We make videos on helping you become the best cat owner, so please join us. And I don't know. I mean, it's almost like she's a reincarnated celebrity or something because she has that sort of attitude. Like, oh, uh, yeah, at the San Diego Cat Show and she's surrounded by people. She was just sitting there like like a celebrity would. Like, okay, here are all these people surrounding me. I, you know, I'm being very gracious and polite and letting everybody get, get their photos. <laughs> it's like, can I have a high five? Okay, here you go. <laughs> it's pretty hilarious. Summer had a very successful career as a show cat, winning many titles in her first few years. Actually, she's grand premier, not a grand champion. And she is also supreme antica, um, which is uh, a supreme altar, which is the highest title you can get in tika. Yeah, so she, she showed, um, and that was all, I considered that all therapy cat training for her. Thanks, Summer. Somali cats are great with people. They can be an excellent choice for families with children, though, they are more independent than other cat breeds. This cat has energy to burn. Active and curious, a Somali cat is always on the lookout for something to do and someone to do it with. If unsupervised or understimulated for too long, the Somali is likely to create its own entertainment. And she will get in the trash. I mean, she thinks trash is something to dig into. So every trash can in my house has a lid. They need to do things all the time or they will just find their own fun, which may not be your version of fun. So if you want a cat that lounges around with you all day or one that will nap and entertain themselves, then a Somali is not the right cat for you. She's done both a uh, movie and a commercial. We don't get a royalty, we got paid dumb, we got paid a fee. She was in a movie called Take Me to Tarzana. They needed a cat that could walk on a leash and they found out about Summer and that she walked on a leash. So they contacted me out of the blue and asked if we were available. And they were shooting out in the uh, Studio City, which is a uh, area not far from here in another part of Los Angeles. And uh, she's just in the first 10 minutes of the film walking on a leash. That, that's the movie that she was in. And I'm, cur I'm credited in the movie as, um, I think, as an animal handler or something like that. And she's also done print ads for uh, um, the company that makes, uh, was it, litter robots. Summer's Hollywood career has been extraordinary. Timo and Arya, what do you guys think? I think they agree. Do you guys think Summer is beautiful? They agree as well. Arya, that is not nice. Summer has a calendar, and if you're interested, I'll link it in the description below. Somali cats are super intelligent and can be trained. Just keep in mind that they learn best using positive reinforcement techniques. 
So use treats and rewards to motivate them. I just started teaching her high fives and everything sort of went from there. I mean, like there were certain things like ringing the bell. I actually taught her from what I learned in a YouTube video. <laughs> oh, totally positive reinforcement. Yeah, and with cats, the whole thing with training is they want to know what's in it for me. In terms of care, Somali cats have soft, silky coats that require regular brushing once or twice a week to keep their coats free from tangles. So keep to a grooming schedule. We have these cats that live around the house. They're feral cats, they're community cats. One of them has a crush on Summer. They've like looked at each other through the glass doors and they're, you know, sort of visited that way. And he's actually really playful. He's almost friendly to people, but not quite. He won't get up close, but like he's played with me with a cat toy through the glass and everything. And so anyway, Summer is really familiar with him and I'm getting ready to film her and she's just in this dress doing her thing that she does with the dress, looking fabulous and knowing she looks fabulous. And I look over her shoulder and there's her friend. And she turns around and she looks and she goes racing off towards him. You know, she just wanted to go see him in person. She probably would have run up to him and just like, you know, just stopped and looked at him, you know, but you know, I didn't want to take any chances. I was not a big fan of cats and dresses, but she actually enjoys wearing them. And, uh, oh my God, we've got a visitor. Summer, no! Don't go running after that cat. Oh, come on. Sometimes watching her interact with some of the people that we do therapy work with is just really super amazing. Like when you when you have your animal evaluated to do therapy work, you never know <laughs> until you actually are on the job if they're going to do it or not. They might get spooked or it might be too weird for them. But she was a natural right off the bat. Like I remember one time at St. Vincent's Hospital, which actually they closed that hospital down now. I don't know if it's because the guy had cats in his life that he missed or there was just something, but he just burst out into tears. Like he literally started crying when she started doing that. And her response to that was just, she was like, started making heavy paws more insistently. She was just comfort him somehow. I mean, it was like she really wanted to make him feel better. And that was like the most amazing moment I think I've ever had with her um, as a therapy animal. If Summer has won you over and you want to get a Somali cat, Somali cats are super rare and you will rarely find them in shelters. So if you wanted to buy one, it could set you back on average anywhere between $2,000 to $4,000. A purebred Somali cat is not cheap and you want to make sure you find a reputable breeder that is registered with the TICA or CFA. This is to ensure you get a healthy cat and not a sick one. I hope you enjoyed learning about the Somali cat and that it helped you decide whether this cat breed is right for you. If you'd like to follow Summer, I'll link her social media and Patreon in description below. And if you'd like to learn more about other cat breeds, you can check out the playlist at the end of the video. Comment down below. What do you think of Somali cats?